Have you watched Netflix lately? There seems to be nothing safe left to watch anymore. Not even cartoons. We have shows as early as, you know, daycare age promoting witchcraft and sorcery and it's okay boys and girls say these spell words with us and it's so ABC preschool witchcraft that it gets into the hearts and the minds of people including the people in church. Everything on the platform seems saturated with scenes of immorality, promotion of LGBTQ plus ideologies and other elements that align perfectly with Satan's agenda. Nowadays when it comes to cinema, being the best for the job doesn't seem to cut it anymore. Under the pretext of inclusivity, the 2024 Oscars are shaking things up with new rules for Best Picture nominations. As part of the Academy's Aperture 2025 initiative, films will now need to meet diversity and inclusion standards to even qualify. So to be eligible, a movie must hit at least two out of four criteria, like having lead actors from underrepresented groups or ensuring that at least 30% of the crew is diverse. Plus, the Academy will require paid internships for diverse talent to help them break into the industry. I think as Christians, it is crucial to recognize the spiritual dangers certain types of media present. The Bible warns us to guard our hearts diligently. Keep thy heart with all diligence, for out of it are the issues of life. What we feed our minds with has a powerful impact on our lives. <laughs> Recently, I watched A Man Called Otto with a friend, and it seemed like a harmless movie, especially because it starred Tom Hanks, and by all means a great actor. But at some point, <laughs> there was a scene involving a transgender character. She was the first person that didn't treat me like a freak, because I'm transgender. She was the first to call me by my new name. She got the other teachers to do it too. He's embarrassed because I'm trans. And he's an idiot. And I have a question for those of you who watched the movie. Do you think that scene was necessary? I would love to get your thoughts in the comments. But until then, I'll give you my opinion for free. <laughs> I think the inclusion of this scene didn't contribute to the storyline. Not even 1%. Instead, it seems like it was placed there intentionally. Just like a plugged ad for a fizzy drink or the latest and greatest car. And, like an ad, the scene was designed to make you buy into the premise of anything is acceptable. And, if you have anything contrary to say about it, then you are intolerant and prehistoric. I feel like in the media today, there's always a hidden catch. Satan uses these platforms to manipulate us. But the Bible gives us wisdom to discern such tactics. Be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary, the devil, as a roaring lion, walketh about, seeking whom he might devour. Movies and television have become one of the most powerful tools the enemy uses to shape opinions, behaviors, and beliefs. Studies have constantly shown Shown that movies and television influence human behavior and emotions. Research conducted by the American Psychological Association has shown that repeated exposure to violence, immorality, and other negative content can desensitize individuals, making this behavior seem acceptable or even normal. This is often referred to as the media cultivation theory, which suggests that the more time people spend consuming corrupted media, the more likely they are to perceive the real world in ways that reflect the most common messages portrayed in that media. Another significant study conducted by the National Institutes of Health found that the brain responds similarly to fictional scenarios in movies as it does in real-life events. This means that when we repeatedly watch content that promotes ideas contrary to Bible values, our thoughts, behaviors, and perceptions of reality will be altered. The Bible clearly advises us against filling our minds with corrupt materials. I will set no wicked thing before for my eyes. So if we allow ourselves to constantly consume entertainment that dishonors God, we risk being drawn away from him. I think Satan's greatest weapon these days is deception. He suddenly distorts the truth and glorifies sin through movies and television. In fact, many blockbuster movies today 
follow a disturbing pattern. A powerful extraterrestrial force attacks Earth and humanity. Whether friend or foe, they all unite to defeat it. We see this repeated over and over again in movies like Avatar, The Hunger Games, Dune, Thor, you name it. The underlying message is often one of rebellion against a higher power. It's actually a veiled metaphor for rebelling against God. In these films, the enemy is always portrayed uh, like a superstar that is uniting with humanity to defeat this higher power. I think this is very similar to how Satan is conditioning people to fight against God in the ultimate battle at the end of time. The Bible speaks of this future conflict known as Armageddon, where Christ will return in glory to conquer evil once and for all. But in Satan's version, he attempts to rewrite the ending, painting himself as the victor. And my friend, please don't forget that Jesus warned us about the power of deception in the last days. For there shall arise false Christ and false prophets, and shall shew great signs and wonders, in so much that, if were possible, they shall deceive the very elect. Satan's goal is very obvious, to distort the truth, making people believe that God is the oppressor and he is the liberator. And what's more concerning <laughs> is that many people, even Christians, are unaware of this spiritual warfare being waged through the media. I recently learned of a scriptwriter's assistant who consulted with real witches to cast actual spells in a TV series. This rumor that I heard, and I want to know if it's true. There's a rumor that production was called by the real, real witch. witches of New Orleans saying you're playing with fire and you got to change up your chants. To... It's true? So in season one, when I was the writer's assistant, I wrote the chants and I would go online and like look up spells. I was like, why not? And then I'd like change a couple words. I go and I I'd, I'd, I'd like figure out a spell. And I'd like go and change a couple words to French and a couple words to like Creole, a couple words to like Haitian Creole. There, you can you do Google Get translate. Get why it's difficult. You do Google yeah. and translate <laughs> to Haitian Creole. And then I'd like throw some Latin in. And I was like I was just like making some spells. And then we got a call from a woman in New Orleans who was like I think that you're playing with fire. I think that you're you know you know what are you trying to do? You're putting these spells in everybody's living room all across America. Like we were like cursing everybody to watch the show. And then um, I started making shit up a little weirder. <laughs> this is no longer fiction, my friends, but a spiritual battle entering our homes through screens. God's word is clear and have no fellowship with unfruitful works of darkness but rather reprove them. We are called to expose and reject evil, not participate in it, even possibly through entertainment. I think entertainment today is not just harmless fun. It has become the battlefield for the mind, a tool Satan uses to desensitize and deceive the world. The thief cometh not, but to steal and to kill and to destroy. So let us not be naive or passive in what we allow into our homes and hearts. As Christians, we are called to be set apart. Be ye not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by renewing of your mind. If we continue to consume movies and shows that promote values contrary to God's word, we risk spiritual decay. Instead, let us fill our minds with things that are pure, noble, and praiseworthy. Now is the time to take a stand, to stop watching media that dishonors God, and to seek content that uplifts, edifies, and draws us closer to Him. How do I personally ensure that the content I watch honors God. I usually start by watching the trailer of the movie. This usually helps me <laughs> determine if it's something that I feel comfortable watching with Jesus by my side. Tough one. <laughs> Even if I think a movie seems good at the beginning, I always tailor it for any scenes that might not align with Bible verses. And if I encounter something I believe Jesus wouldn't approve of, I usually stop the film and just go read my Bible instead. It's just as simple as that. Yeah, I know, I know, it's not that easy. But this is part of what it means to follow Jesus in today's world. So thank you so much for taking the time to reflect on this message. And if this resonates with you, please share it with your friend, give it a thumbs up, and subscribe for more. And let's work together to save 
guard our minds and hearts, staying true to the path that leads to eternal life. That had to be said. See you on the next one, my friend. God bless you. You know, they recreated that movie, The Craft, mm. in 2020. Really? They recreated the movie and they invited real witches on the set and they had the witches before they would do a scene to cast spells and to invite the actresses to come into this circle with them while they were releasing spell words over the viewers and over the the scene. And oh they, they broadcast it and wrote articles like, isn't this amazing? We're getting real and raw with these real witches and people are playing it in their home and it's entertainment. And you know, Charlene, I always say the first part of entertainment is enter. enter. So be careful what's entering your home. <laughs>